What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to speed up your Mac Pro. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. So what we're going to need to do this is a PCIe card that is Mac compatible. I ordered mine from OWC and I will throw a link in the description below for that. And you're also going to need an NVMe solid state drive. I got mine from Amazon and I will also link that in the description below. Let's get into the unboxing. So I decided to speed the video up uh, for the unboxing in an effort to keep the video shorter. Uh, we're going to need to remove the two screws on the back of the PCIe card in order to take the heat sink off. The heat sink does have a nice thermal pad on it for your SSD. You just place the SSD in this slot and then the screw you need comes with the PCIe card as well as the two additional screws for the heat sink. So we'll go ahead and get this all put together and then we'll be back. So to get this installed, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously unhook your Mac Pro. To get the cover off, we're going to release this latch and then we're going to pull this off. From there we're going to remove these two thumb screws that uh, hold this bracket in place which holds all of your PCIe cards in place and Apple uses this instead of using individual screws for each individual PCIe card. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this out and then in my case I need to move my uh, USB 3.0 card so I'm going to move it up a slot so that I can put this uh, SSD in between the graphics card and the hard drive so hopefully it's getting the least amount of heat from the other components in the computer. So we'll go ahead and take care of that and then we'll be right back. Installation of the card is pretty easy. We're just going to make sure that it lines up with the PCIe slot on the main board of the Mac Pro and then we're just going to slide it into place and push it down and it should look like this. And then after that we're just going to do everything in reverse. So we're going to put that bracket back in and tighten down the thumb screws and then we're going to put the side panel back on our case. After you get your Mac Pro all hooked back up and reassembled, we're going to jump back on here and we want to open up Disk Utility. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to format the SSD that we just installed. So you can see we have it right down here and we're going to go ahead and just erase it. And I'm going to do it for the uh, Mac APFS format because I'm going to actually clone my current drive because I want to use this as my primary hard drive. So if all you want is extra storage then after you erase it then you're done. Or if you want to do a fresh install then um, you could do a fresh install after you complete this step as well. So in order to clone your current hard drive we're going to need to reboot the computer into recovery mode and then open up disk utility once we get in there. Okay, so once you get into your recovery, if you would like to just do a fresh install and use this as your primary drive, then you're going to want to click here. Um, the version of Mac OS that you're running might be different, but it's the same concept. You're just going to reinstall the operating system. And then if you want to do what I'm doing, which is cloning your drive, then you're going to click here. 
and then you will see here that our drive is listed on the left hand side under internal because in the previous step we named it uh, Western Digital Blue so it's right there it's the first one so we're gonna go ahead and highlight that and then we're gonna go over and because I want to clone my primary drive I'm gonna click restore from the top bar here and then it's gonna ask me which drive I want to restore from so my primary drive currently is a SATA SSD labeled Macintosh hard drive so I'm just gonna pick that and then I'm gonna click restore and this process is gonna take a while so we'll be back as soon as that's done for those of you that decided to clone your drive like I did you're gonna to want to power down your machine when that is complete and remove the drive that you cloned uh, that way there's no problems when you try to boot because you're gonna have the exact same name for two different hard drives and there'll be a conflict when the computer tries to boot and for reference this was my primary drive prior to installing the PCIe SSD so I was just using a normal SATA with an OWC adapter once you successfully boot on the new drive you can power down put your old drive back in and then boot into recovery to format it so that you don't have any conflicts when you're trying to start your computer up in the future Enough about all of that though, let's get into the speed test because that's what everybody cares about. So right now this is the speed test off of our old drive which was just a SATA SSD and we made sure that we set the file size to 5 gig and as you can see here we're getting um, actually pretty slow write speeds so we ended up with even slower read speeds. So our read speed ended up at 179.5 megabytes per second and our write speed ended up at 221.8 megabytes per second. And now let's hop over and see if the uh, PCIe SSD we just installed gets us any better results. And we'll make sure we have the file set to 5 gigs still. And then we'll start that test. And you can see right out the gate it is uh, tremendously better. We end up with a uh, read speed of 1484.9 megabytes per second and a write speed of 1407.3 megabytes per second. From here I wanted to do a real world boot test to show you guys the speed difference between the SATA SSD and the MVME card uh, SSD that we, we installed. So. I was originally going to speed this up, but I decided that it would be better to actually show you the true speed between the two different drives. And as you can see here, the new card is blazing fast with a boot time of 22 seconds and our old SATA SSD, we haven't even made it past the post screen yet. And finally, for what seems like forever and a day later, the old SATA drive is finally booted with a boot time of 78 seconds or 1 minute and 18 seconds, making the new NVMe drive the clear winner here. And in my opinion, it was well worth the money. Well, that's it for this one, folks. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.